Hi everyone. Uh, is my voice audible to you all? Welcome you all to the orientation session for taxation uh, UK ACCA and the batch which I'm going to conduct for you people is for March 2024. So right, right now we'll be like starting with the orientation related to taxation which is being held on your faces if that's like possible for you could you please turn your cameras on okay 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 so so uh that's pretty much like understandable so here as what i've ta taught you uh that the taxation is the subject which is going to be under discussion and uh, my name is Sanya Asif and I am the tutor for taxation. Uh, besides taxation, I also teach advanced taxation. I've been into uh, teaching the financial aspects in SEMA UK, as well as I've offered um, financial accounting subjects to the accountancy career over here in Pakistan. And I've got an experience of more than 18 years. To my credit, I have attended, uh, I have basically taken, trained the trainer sessions. I have attended study school. Uh, besides that, I've been a contractor related to the uh, examination of taxation as well as advanced taxation. And uh, besides that, I'm, so this is all about me you can also find me on acca website where i have a go for um, advanced taxation so, so that is basically my little introduction so let's just come to your syllabus here in taxation syllabus we will be going through five types of taxes. Though, let me just tell you that there are multiple types of taxes, but these five types of taxes are there in your syllabus for taxation. And these are the most important ones as well. So first of all, the first type of tax, which we will cover in our upcoming session, that's about income tax. That is the most important one. And... Um, uh, a majority portion of your exam is comprising over income tax aspects. So you'll see major rules related to income tax uh, perspective to be tested in your exam. Income tax is basically a type of tax which is to be paid by individuals. Precisely, UK resident individuals. So if a person is residing in UK, if a person belongs to UK and he is earning an income through any source uh, from any part of the world, I mean, worldwide income, which is being UK, who is said to be precisely a UK resident person, shall have to pay income tax over his income. By the way, what do you believe? What could be the primary sources of income through which an individual okay if you are a resident of any part any other part of the world you must be receiving income from some very famous sources what could these be what actually comes in your mind when uh, uh, it is said that someone is like receiving income what actually you start thinking about the source of income yeah the rental income if a person has let the property the rental income Yes, you're right. If a person has made investment into shares, he must be receiving dividend. Uh, if a person is employed, he's doing a job, he must be getting salary. Besides that, if a person has reached a state retirement age, he must be receiving pension income. And of course, one should not forget that is if someone is doing a business, he must be receiving, he must be generating profits on it. On these sources of income, which you have told me, uh, there is said to be an implication 
generation of income taxes received by a UK resident individual, whether the income is being generated from UK or from any uh, part, any other part of the world, uh, be it rental income or dividend or employment income or whatsoever the income is like being generated in a year, an individual is liable to pay income tax. Then there comes another important type of tax and that is said to be a corporation tax. As the name suggests, this is, these are the corporate bodies which are to be, which are supposed to be paying this type of tax. What is meant by corporate? I mean, if I say the name is like so obvious that who will have to pay this tax, the corporate bodies, what is meant by a corporate unit, a corporate body? What actually comes in your mind when this word is spoken? Tax, which is called a corporation tax. Yes, you are pretty much right. Uh, we are talking about companies over here. So if a business is said to be registered either as a public limited company or a private limited company, the company must be generating income from multiple sources, whether it's like their trading profit or their rental income, or if they are going to sell off a non-current asset and they're generating gain, a profit on it, whatsoever the source in short through which an income is being received received by a company, a profit is being generated by the company, they will be held responsible to pay corporation taxes. Then there is another type of tax which is said to be capital gains tax. Again, this is to be paid by once again UK resident individuals over the profit that is generated upon the selling of a chargeable asset. Generically, if someone is going to sell a non-current asset, so though I generally can say if someone is going to sell non-current asset, but precisely not all the non-current assets would lead to capital gains tax. There is like a vast majority of non-current assets, which according to taxation culture, if they are sold, it is said to be a disposal of a chargeable asset. So when those non-current assets for which government is like seriously concerned as if when they are sold the gain is being generated on them then the individual a UK resident individual precisely will uh, said to be paying a type of tax which is said to be a capital gains tax. So in simple terms I can say that if being a UK resident individual I'm going to sell off any non-current asset precisely any chargeable asset and the asset is sold for a profit, for a gain. Then on the gain, I being an individual, I will have to pay capital gains taxes. But wait, you must be getting confused with the income tax as income tax is also uh, supposed to be paid by the individuals as well. But technically, there is a difference. When it comes to uh, like a normal, a regular, a routine source of income, I mean, if a person is like employed, he must be getting employment income in routine. He must be getting salary in routine in a regular way. If someone is doing a business, he must be generating profit in a routine. So if a person is receiving an income in a routine, he is paying income tax on that income. But when it comes to uh, a one-off income, whenever there is like said to be a disposal of a chargeable asset and that leads to a profit, that leads to a gain, then an individual will not be paying income tax on it. Rather, they will have to pay capital gains taxes. So see, there is a difference that uh, though individual is liable to pay both income taxes as well as capital gains taxes, but capital gains taxes is not supposed to be a type of tax which is imposed in a regular manner, which has to be paid regularly every year. It is uh, paid whensoever individual will be disposing of a chargeable asset. And First of all, if a chargeable asset is sold for a gain, then capital gains tax liability shall have to be paid. Then comes an important type of tax, which is said to be an inheritance tax. And again, it is like quite evident from the name that when this tax will have to be paid, though I'm just giving you a hint that once again, an individual is liable to pay inheritance taxes. I mean, it is not the type of tax which is imposed on companies. Again, the individuals have to pay inheritance taxes. But when would an individual 
be paying inheritance tax. Of course, when there is like said to be inheritance of something, but technically I want to ask you people a question. What is meant by inheritance? What is inheritance? Please be quick, be active, drop your concerns, drop your questions in the dialogue also that I may come to know that what you are actually thinking, uh, what I'm like telling you, does it make sense to you? Are you getting all the things? Yes, passing down of the property. That's very much correct. If one person is like going to uh, transfer his or her property to someone else, whether in his or her lifetime or upon death, that is like said to be uh, a passing down of property. That is said to be a situation where inheritance is going to take place and hence Inheritance tax liability shall have to be paid in such situation. Yeah, whether the person is alive or not, in all those cases, whensoever the property is going to be transferred from one individual to another individual or to trust, by the way, trust implications will be discussed later. But whensoever there's like going to be a passing down of property that there is said to be an implication of a very important type of tax and that is said to be an inheritance tax. The question is, can it be passing down of business to, yes, anything else, whether it's like a trivial item or as major as a business would be. So if you are going to like transfer anything, whether it's a current asset, it's a non-current asset, it's a trivial element, or it's like going to be a big thing. If it is going to be transferred from one person to another, it is said to be like inherited by someone else. And here the inheritance tax will have to be imposed. Though this is like a comprehensive thing that who shall be liable to pay off the taxes? I mean, whether the person who's going to make the transfer of the property, the transfer, the donor of the property, or the person who's like going to get the property to acquire, to inherit the property, which precisely can be called as a recipient or the donor of the asset. Uh, see, these all things have been covered in the recorded lecture, but let me just tell you that whenever there's said to be an implication of a lifetime transfer, whenever there is said to be a transfer of an asset in the life of a donor, there could be a chance. I mean, whether donor would decide to pay off the taxes as well or donor would be inclined to pay off the taxes. But of course, when a person dies, when the donor dies and then his property is going to be transferred to another person, this question becomes meaningless that who is going to pay off the taxes. Of course, the one who is like still existing. I mean, the donee, the transferee of the asset. Is that clear? Right. So there is another type of tax as well, which is said to be a value added tax. Value added tax is like very much common. It is... Um, being imposed on the selling price. So if I'm doing a business, I'm the seller and my business is registered, I shall have to charge back the sales tax precisely on the selling price of my product. So for instance, if I am the seller, I'm doing a business and I set the price of my product to be 100 pounds, being a seller, as what I've said that I'll have to charge back over the selling price of the product. For instance, the tax value is of 20 pounds. So that's how the total value of the product, the gross price, the retail price of the product will become 120 pounds. So this is the price for which I will be selling this product to the customer. He will be paying me 120 pounds, but I shall have to retain only 100 pounds because these 100 pounds do belong to me. And what about this 20 pound? this 20 pounds shall have to be paid to government. In fact, all the taxes are to be paid to government because this is basically the basic source of revenue for government. If I ask you that what is a tax, then tax is something for which government is actually striving for. The government waits for the income to be collected in the form of taxes because that is going to constitute a major source of income a major source of revenue for government. Do you people know that uh, what is the name of taxation authority, the regulatory authority in your own countries? You must have gone, uh, you must have got separate names for your taxation authorities, but precisely I am uh, discussing UK taxation culture with you 
then do you know this thing that what is the name of um, taxation department regulatory authority for taxation in uk yes that's fpr in pakistan yes that's hmrc it is his majesty revenue and custom his majesty revenue and custom that is basically the name of the tax authority they are responsible to see that who is going to pay off the taxes who does not pay the tax at all who is not going to pay the tax on time what kind of penalties are to be imposed so i mean every type of regulatory procedure has to be uh, governed has to be overseen by the authority and that's called hmrc as in his majesty revenue and custom is that clear what is basically his what they are uh, pinpointing to who is being addressed as his over here yeah they're talking about king charles because he is basically uh, the head of the state over there in uk so every government department is being run in his name that's hmrc his majesty revenue and customs there's a question return on tax should be paid on all types of taxes uh, return as in what could you please um, elaborate the question basically let me just tell you that uh, tax returns is a very technical term and this is not basically like having a return of something see return is basically the official document on which tax liability should be calculated and then submitted to the government so yes if you are earning from any source that source has to be declared in front of uh, the tax authority the tax which is going to be due on that particular source of income has to be disclosed in front uh, in front of taxation authority and that document is called tax return is that clear and if you are generally asking that will we have to pay return as in the taxes on all types of income then when you go through the recorded lectures you'll come to know that on most of the types of the taxes we do have to pay tax to government but there are few sources of income as well on which there shall be like no implication related to taxation so let's quickly move towards your exam pattern how the exam is going to be conducted see in your exam you will be facing three sections section a b and c when it comes to section a section a will be comprising over 15 objective test questions each objective test question will be carrying two marks so 15 uh, objective test questions into two that makes this part to be of 30 marks by the way what is meant by objective test questions actually there are numerous ways through which objective testing could be made as in you could be like given uh, a multiple choice question uh, a little bit information will be given to you for which like four options will be given to you out of which one is correct and you'll have to circle that particular correct answer you can also be asked in the form of multiple response questions by multiple response question i would say that once again you will be given with a certain piece of information for which you will be like given either six or eight options out of which two or three are correct and you will have to click uh, all the correct options for instance if you are asked that uh, out of all these options two options are correct so you'll have to mark two options that's called multiple response questions if you are going to mark both of the two correct options then you will be getting a credit of two marks you'll be getting credit for that particular question but for instance if half of the question is correct and half has not been um answered properly then there is no concept of partial marking as far as your taxation uh, exam is concerned though the best part is there is no negative marking as well so you will not be losing anything which you have already earned but for the sake of securing two marks for an ot case the whole ot i mean the whole ot question 
the objective test question has to be answered appropriately. Then you could be asked in the form of fill in the blank. And by the way, if you will be asked for a, uh, for a particular answer to be given in the form of a blank, then avoid using commas, full stops, and slashes. I mean, what is meant by uh, full stop, comma, and slashes? As in, for instance, if you are given with a question for which the answer is 4,000. So if the answer is 4,000, you just need to write 4,000. Zero, zero, zero. But if you're going to write, if you're going to type like this, 4, comma, triple zero, or 4, comma, triple zero, slash, then it is like read by a computer as an extra character for which you will not be getting any score. In fact, you might have answered appropriately, but you are not going to get to score because computer is going to read this comma, this slash as an extra character and the computer will then be like deducting the marks as if uh, what is going to be perceived by the computer as if the answer has not been given appropriately. So whensoever a fill in the blank is tested in the exam, number one, it is the number, it is the digit, it is a certain figure which has to be calculated for which when you are going to put it in the blank, avoid using commas, full stops, hyphens, slashes, and anything which could be counted as an extra character, right? Then there could be match the column type of OT, which we call as drag and drop. By drag and drop, there could be a chance that you'll be given with multiple list and for which there are multiple answers. And there could be a chance that first option will be will have to be matched with its correct answer. Similarly, the second one and the third one will have to be matched towards its correct option. And this is basically called as hot area. So this is how you are going to uh, match the relevant boxes with the relevant answers. That's how the hot area type of OT is tested. Hotspot is like somehow common. You will be like given a space like three or four options will be given and you will have to pick a certain thing and drop it in the relevant box. You, you can either call it as a hotspot or drag and drop uh, thing. Drop down menu is another type of OT in which uh, you will have to drop the menu. You'll be given with four options and you'll have to select a certain specific option. So these are like numerous ways through which you will be tested with objective test question. And once again, when it comes to section A, you will be uh, experiencing five, 15 OTs of two marks each. And that's how this part will be carrying 30 marks. And here, examiner will not be interested in how you have figured out the answer. It is basically the answer which has to be correct. I mean, if you have given the correct answer, no matter what kind of working you have made, you will not have to submit the working. It is just the answer which has to be correct. If your answer is correct, you will get two marks. If your answer is not correct for a particular OT, you will be losing straight away those two marks. Then there comes another section and that's section B, which is once again related to objective test questions. In this area, you will be uh, given three OT cases. Uh, now, what is meant by an OT case? A certain full-fledged case, a comprehensive content will be given to you people for which five questions will be asked, five OTs will be asked. So technically, if there are going to be three OT cases, three cases, and every OT case will be having five objective test questions. So technically, you will once again be asked with 15 objective test questions. And each objective test question will be carrying two marks. And that's how, once again, uh, this whole part is of 30 marks. And once again, there are multiple ways through which objective testing could be made, either in the form of fill in the blank, multiple choice question, multiple response question, drag and drop menu, and uh, whatnot. Uh, but once again, keep one thing in mind that when it comes to section A or section B, the important thing is the answer. If your answer is correct, you will be getting the score. But if your answer is not correct, you will not be getting two marks. 
though there is no concept of negative marking. Then comes section C where you will have to construct your response. Here are uh, basically expected three questions. Question number one, which is going to cover any area of the five types of taxes, which I've told you are going to be tested in your exam. But when it comes to second question, that will be precisely covering the income tax aspects. And when it comes to question three, then it will surely be covering corporation tax aspect. Your question number one will be of 10 marks. Question number two will be of 15 marks. While question number three will be off again, 15 marks. So altogether, that's how we can say this whole part is of 40 marks. So it's like your exam is of 100 marks out of which 50 is the passing mark. And if you ask me that what kind of this paper is, let, let, let me just tell you that Taxation is considered to be an interesting as well as an easy paper for passing perspective. Though, let me just clarify this word of being an easy paper. There are technically a lot of rules in the whole taxation content. You'll have to go through a lot of treatments. But once you have learned those treatments, once you have understood those treatments, then attempting the exam is not going to be a burdensome thing for you. I mean, it is not going to be something which is going to be a troublesome. It is not going to confuse you. It is not going to overburden you. Because if you have gone through the rules, then everything will be like crystal clear whatsever the specific exams there in your uh, exam kits, as it is, the questions are tested. So if one is having a good concept and have a good grip on the practical implication of those concepts, that person can easily secure good marks. And to my credit, there had been like multiple place winners in the past. And um, if you just ask them, then they would say that it is just the practice which makes the difference. So I just hope that this exam pattern is like clear to you all. If there's anything else which you need to know regarding your exam pattern, please let me know. And the most important thing, your paper is three hours long. And if you have got a good uh, skills, I mean, you have got a good practice skills, then you can easily manage your paper in these three hours. I mean, practice is the key to success. If you have practiced a lot of questions, then a passing a paper will not will no longer be a problematic thing. Is that clear? Right. So the most important thing that how we teach at Virtual Institute for Higher Education. So technically, how the WIFI is going to facilitate you in this aspect. The whole content has been extensively recorded. These recordings are already uploaded on your portal regarding each and every treatment of taxation along with extensive detailed practice questions. So you would not be finding even a single particular topic for which no practice question is attached. So it's like the whole conceptual items as well as their practice material is already there in the recorded form. And these recordings will remain available to you till your exam day. Then every week, I and you will be having a live meetup. There's like going to be a live class in which we will be like discussing certain specific topics in terms of practice. I mean, um, uh, the planner has already been uploaded on the portal. You must have seen, let me just show you the portal as well. For instance, if any one of you has not yet gone through the portal uh, planner. So it's like, as in right now, today, December uh, 11th, from this date till 27th of December, you people will have to cover these four chapters for which recordings are already there. And then on December 27th, I'll come live. I'll have a discussion with you people. If going through these four topics, you have come across any problem, you can ask your concerns in the live class. Plus, of course, the practice 
of the question will have to be conducted. My primary focus will be over practice. And of course, I'll keep on listening to you people that what is your concern? Which things have not been uh, understood clearly? What had been the problematic areas? Of course, these all things are to be discussed in the live class. Then in the next week, you will have to cover these four chapters for which live class will be conducted on January, to, uh, January 3rd, 2024. And again, not just the practice related to these four chapters will be done, but I'll obviously listen to what you have to say about these chapters, what had been your concerns. And that's how the whole syllabus has been divided into six live classes. So that's how every week you will have to cover a little bit of the course for which a live class will be done in which I'll be like going through you once again, uh, the practice stream and I'll be listening to you that what are your concerns related to the topics, the concepts and everything. And you people have also been given with e-notes. They are downloadable, printable. So just download them, keep them in front of you. And let me just suggest you that whensoever you are watching the videos, and you come across any point which you find very uh, useful, which you want to uh, remember till the end of the session, you just write them on your notes. So all the e-notes which have been given to you, they, they are easily downloadable. They could be pr printed. So just print them and keep them in front of you. And then so we're go going through the recordings, keep on writing down on the notes because if you develop a habit of writing extra information on the notes, uh, the things will be like quite, uh, the things will become quite easy for you to understand later when you will once again be going through these notes later at the point of like summing up your preparation. Then teacher assistant model is like uh, also there. Uh, an assistant is like allocated to you people. Uh, once you people get enrolled, I will be there in the group along with the teacher assistant and whatsoever your query, whatsoever your concern is, you should keep on dropping a query on like an ongoing basis. And I and my team will be delighted to give you a response on as soon as possible basis. Then once all these live classes are held, then the most important thing, which is like very important for the sake of assessing your performance as well, a mock exam that is going to be conducted at the end of the session. I'll be like conducting a full-fledged mock exam. Uh, you people will be asked to handle the exam in the exam pressure in three hours time period. And then I myself will be checking those exams. And I'll tell you that where do you actually lack? I, I will give you an extensive feedback so that you can prepare yourself for the upcoming exam. And... Apart from live classes, at the end of every live class, I will allocate an assignment to you people. You will have to solve the assignment. You'll have to upload the assignment and the assignment will also be checked. Though it is going to be checked by the teacher assistant, but this will be checked. I'll keep an eye on the assignments. I'll keep on like having a view that how many of you are interested in like submitting their regular assignments because as long as you people will be like... Uh, uploading all the assignments you will be like going through all the assignments that is basically a guarantee for your success then in the end a revision on grant basis will have to be conducted and this is like called grant revision in which i'll be taking you to the acc portal i'll be solving the exam on the portal on which you will have to handle your exam eventually on the exam day and with the help of multiple tools we people we we will keep on like uh, tracking your performance that how many se recorded uh, sessions you are uh, watching how many live classes you are going to attend uh, the the usability of the e notes the the assignments the number of assignments which you are going to upload as well as uh, whether you conduct whether you uh, like take your mock exam or not and if the as many points as many practicing tools you are going to opt you are going to give a credit and that's going to be a beneficial thing as in whatsoever the scores regarding all the uh 
parts related to your module are going to be covered. That is like going to give you a certain score and that score is like going to facilitate you to have a discount in future for uh, your next papers, which you are going to take up from Virtual Institute for Higher Education. So technically, uh, the higher the number of assignments you are going to upload, the higher the score you are going to achieve and the higher percentage of discount you are going to get. So that's how the whole system is like being built on a gamification model. Is that clear? There's a question as well that um, can we get latest Kaplan exam kit and study text on the group? Yes, definitely. Definitely you will surely be getting the Kaplan exam kit uh, soft in the soft form as well as the study text in your group. And uh, uh, I have myself done multiple test your understandings illustrations while go through the recording recorded sessions so i think whatsoever i've covered that's more than enough but if you find time if you uh, want to do some extra practice as well then of course you may cover a lot uh, many examples which are not there in your session but apart from that the, uh, the these things one should not forget that you have to go through your uh, Kaplan exam kit as well, right? So exam kit is like very important. And before that, I move forward. Um, let me just introduce you uh, with a new faculty member at WIFI. Uh, her name is Aisha Faisal and she's an experienced, a learned tutor, uh, you could see that she had been uh, quite a good student because she secured SPL first rank in Kuwait and uh, see that she has got an extensive experience of five years and she has been teaching in one of the top 10, uh, in one of the approved learning partner uh, Institute of India and besides that she has been an audit executive on the top 10 audit firms of Mumbai. So she has got a thorough knowledge as well as a, a deep insight of uh, uh, like uh, the financial perspective uh, which is like quite essential for a teacher to have in order to teach uh, the paper like financial reporting as well as uh, strategic business reporting. So she is like going to be a, a very good addition, a very valuable addition to our faculty at WIFI. So please, if you are going to take up FR or SPR either in this attempt or the attempt afterwards, be connect, uh, try to connect to her because she is like going to take your game to the next level, right? So I'm just going to share a link in your dialog box. It is related to our groups. Just give me a second so that I could copy the link and share in your groups. This is basically the global group. There could be a chance that you people are already familiar with this group. This is actually a WhatsApp group called as Global Group for TX. And um, you can join the group. You will find that there are a lot of students from multiple parts of the world who are there. in the group and taking the benefits being offered in the group. I mean, there are there is a vast community of students who are going to take up a taxation exam uh, in March 2024. So that's going to be a very helping tool because when you're going through any question, when you're going through any conceptual thing and you get stuck to a certain point, you just drop in, drop your concern in the group and there are a lot of students who would readily help you out. And besides them, I'm also there, a part of that group, and I would love to answer your queries. But 
it is like going to be an extensive help it is an unpaid group so one can easily be a part of this group so you or any of your friend who would like to be a part of any group which could be a helping hand while going through this extensive uh, studies of acca they can easily benefit themselves with the taxation rules uh, from other pupils as well as their tutors and for instance if you get enrolled that i will let you in in the group which is a paid group and here i my facilities will be like instantly given to you people whensoever you are going to put your concern in the dialog box and not just me my whole team will be there who is going to who is like readily available over there to facilitate you in all possible terms there is a question is this course applicable for june attempt or will the syllabus change uh, unfortunately the syllabus is going to get changed though the change proportion is like 30 to 40% when it comes to taxation but yes the course will change in june here on your screens you can see um that if you want to get yourself enrolled at wifi for taxation or for whatever paper pay, uh, exam you can contact the support team on your whatsapp at this number which is 0092324922138 and i have already um, shared the link of wifi whatsapp group updates and that is something which i wanted to communicate to you people is there any question comment concern if you want to uh, share anything else with me regarding the taxation regarding your institute in which you want to get yourself enrolled or anything else for which you are concerned or confused about kindly let me know so that i could help you out so could i ask you one thing that um, uh which paper which uh, papers you have already attempted i mean which exams you have already uh, taken up you have cleared uh, and what do you actually pursue uh, in the upcoming session so any exam which you have already taken up before this taxation could you please let me know okay so your taxation is left right out of fundamentals right okay so it is like an easy thing for you people to go through taxation uh, subject right now in this session because everything is there on the portal you can like start studying your subject in an extensive detail right now at the same point i mean there's like no going to be no gap no delay everything is there in front of you so you can do uh, the maximum with all the maximum facilities which are being provided at WIFI and uh, considering um, that uh, this subject is itself a very interesting subject in terms of uh, the being a numerical paper so for all those students who are good at digits who are good at numbers who can do the computations quickly this uh, paper is like a heaven for them so thank you so much i would like to now wind up the session if you people would like to enroll yourself here is the detail you can contact our support team at wifi on whatsapp at this number kindly note the number down and i have also shared uh, the wifi tx global group which is an unpaid group you can join it for free just to be a part of that group so that you can keep yourself updated with the latest concept rules for the clarification of the queries and everything and uh, this is the maximum possible things which one institute could offer as far as a subject is concerned so best of luck for the upcoming session i'm going to sign off right now thank you and goodbye